It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. We are headed toward the end of a school year, and that always uh, brings some special considerations with it. Uh, students very much involved in uh, end-of-year things. And, and, yeah, when you get to the middle of May, maybe things ease up a bit for them. Uh, but they've got some hard hard pulling to do here, and so do their school administrators. We're joined on the line this morning by Jody Rainey of the Homer Center School District, the high school principal, in our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Jody, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. I know it is a busy, busy time, isn't it? Oh, gee. Very much so. Very much, yes. The school calendar, I, I, you know, I don't know that people really appreciate what goes into building a school calendar, uh, but there are some natural things uh, within a school calendar that have to happen at a given time every year, and a part of that is a standardized testing, uh, and, and we know that that goes on at this time of the year. We know that that's a burden on a school district, and but it's it's a really important thing. It is, and it's just like we talked last thing, month, thought is, you know, you know, we're actually right now, this moment, our kids are setting, our 7th and 8th graders are setting in PSSA testing right now. That's what they're doing. Um, you know, and so, like we said last, it's something that we need to do, that we're required to do. And so, we kind of take the approach. We can complain about it, or we can try to do what we can to make it work for us. And, you know, and so, you know, what's going to happen after these tests are over? We're going to get some good data on our kids see how much they've grown that tells us you know or is our teaching is our curriculum is our teaching strategies our assessments are they effective um you know and we'll have more information you know as a cohort and individually for students on where their strengths lie and where we can maybe help them improve and 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 close some gaps that they may have that's going to help give them a better foundation when they leave here so we just make it work for us and you know, so our kids have a great attitude about it. We just tell them, like, we've done this all year. That's game day. So right now I, uh, it sounds like we're winning. We hope we at the end of the testing we we do win. <laughs> so, you know, so it's just, it's just, I think it's just, you know, the way you approach things overall is, you know, we don't sit around and, and say what we wish we could do or we should do this different. It's what we have to do. And so we're going to do the best we can, and uh, our kids are working very hard. I do know that. And uh, and once they're done, the 7th and 8th graders, we roll into some AP testing here early May. And then as we close the year, that's when our upperclassmen that are currently enrolled in biology, um, English 9, uh, literature, and um, algebra 1, if they haven't taken it already as 8th graders, uh, so they'll be testing and those in the Keystone exams uh, for the upperclassmen uh, at the end of the year. So a lot of testing coming up for sure. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and as you say, you make the you make the most of it. The problem is uh, you don't see the scoreboard until after the game's over. <laughs> but and, and several several months after the game is over, I might add too, Todd. So yeah, you yeah. know. But you know, it is what it is. You know, I mean, you know, we can. You know, we have so many other things going on at this time of the year, too, that, you know, we just, uh, you know, just make the best of it, put our best effort in there. And, and I think it's trying to organize all the different other events that are more fun, obviously, than taking tests that the kids have coming in front of them, too. So. Yeah, you've got prom coming up and uh, graduation is, is not so far away right now. Uh, you know, shepherding uh, these uh, seniors uh, through the end of their high school years and uh, getting them prepared to move on. Uh, it, it sometimes might seem as that if that's an easy task, but uh, they've got some things that they, they've had goals and uh, they've mm-hmm. been working toward them. And, and I know that, uh, you know, celebrating that achievement is, is really something. This is really the culmination of their whole high school career, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest things that have happened in the last few years is the state has come out with what they call graduation pathways. Like in the past, it was supposed to be like, what do they do on state testing? And they have to meet certain things. And they've kind of added different pathways for different kids. Uh, the realization that maybe not every kid's going to get a proficient or advanced score on a state exam. Like they look at things like our kids that are ICTC, they just finished, they just did their NOCTIs. Uh, that's their certification tests. 
and for seniors in their shop programs at ICTC. They just took those last um, week. And so if they get an advanced or proficient in their industry-level certifications, that's a graduation pathway for them that they can graduate. That's a way that they've demonstrated their, their learning and stuff over the years. Um, we give our kids the ASVAB test, at a certain score on the ASVAB test. Uh, most people associate that with military entrance. But the ASVAB test gives us a lot of information about students' apt- abilities and aptitudes and interests. And um, and so if they score, I believe it's a 31 or higher on that ASVAB uh, exam, then that's another pathway. Their SAT scores, when they take SATs, uh, they can do what they call um, basically a composite score on their state test. If they get two proficients in one basic, as long as their scaled scores equal a certain number, they call that a composite so making sure we're checking the boxes that all of our kids have met at least one of the pathways. Uh, our guidance counselors, Kristen Kirchie and Kurt Krajosik, are the best around, and uh, they're on top of that, and, and they're doing that, as well as Kristen is our uh, our district testing coordinator. So she's probably the busiest person in this district at this point of the year, for sure. And and doing all that and still managing to help kids through some different needs they may have, be it academically, be it social, be it emotional, um, you know, psychological, whatever, and helping kids uh, with her and Kurt. Um, we're so blessed. I'm so blessed to have those two as counselors here at Homer Center. I mean, they are phenomenal and very much uh, deeply involved with the success of these kids. So I definitely want to give them their due today for sure. Absolutely. Speaking of giving people their due, there is a young lady uh, who is doing amazing things at Bucknell University right now, uh, who is a Homer Center graduate, Justly Sharp, um, who we have followed and have worked with actually here at Renda Broadcasting yes. for the yes. last couple of years. Uh, she's doing amazing things for Bucknell uh, but I recall when she was, uh, you know, such an athletic, uh, uh, real sharpshooter there for the Homer Center Wildcats uh, that probably the most impressive thing about her uh, was uh, what's going on up, upstairs in the brain. Uh, she's a really, really well-rounded uh, student athlete in college now, but we saw it at Homer Center, too, that the intellect uh, and the desire for learning, all of that with Justly Sharp. She's she's a pretty impressive young lady. I can tell you this, anything that Justly uh, has, any accolade that she's ever received, she has certainly earned. She is an exceptionally dedicated, focused individual, and you hit it, Todd. She is, a lot of times because of her athletic success, people don't realize that she is, she is super intelligent, um, very well-rounded in every phase of life. And probably the greatest thing about Justly, you know, I mean, all the accomplishments we could we could talk for four days and probably not cover them all. Um, it's just the person she is. She's very solid in her values, and she is not going to sacrifice that to win the favor of anybody. Um, she's very grounded, and and she she's a lot of fun too. Like you know, sometimes you get people and you think that, and she's serious when she's going to work, when she's doing something academically, athletically, you know, the, the amount of time that she puts in working out for athletics and, and just, you know, focused on certain things, but her intellect and understanding the techniques and also just how she learns, like she, she is, but she is a lot of fun. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's like she she has a personality too. It's it's phenomenal. She is she is an exceptional human being. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and, you and, know, and so you know, and she, you know, and you know, and you know, she has a little bit of the athleticism in her blood. You know, I mean, I know her her dad Wes and uh, her mom Lori. You know, and um, you know, even her brother. I mean, like there there's a lot of athletic gene in that blood. Let me tell you. Yeah, there really is. But uh, the personality. You hit it right there, man. She is so much fun to be around. Uh, and, and she's a real testament to the way that uh, students are prepared at Homer Center. And I know that if you had to hold up one or two students, uh, that would certainly be a great example of the way that you want students to um, get through and then leave Homer Center and enter out into a, a, a very difficult world in which we live. Justly uh, seems to be right on the mark. 
She is, and I and I'd say that. And I think one of the things that you know, education takes hits a lot. You know, you know, we're we're a great punching bag for a lot of people. Uh, I think so. You know, and but the one thing that I say, like my profession, you know, is I'm I'm definitely closer to the end of it, Todd, than I am the beginning. And you know, I, I say, you know, what a great job I have. Like, what do I get to do? I get to help kids make their dreams come true. I mean, that's you know, you think about that, you put that in a nutshell, like we were just talking today about all these testing pathways and stuff. And I was having a meeting with two of my teachers this morning about some things we've been working on. And, and I, you know, we were talking about, you know, testing and pathways. And I said, you know, ultimately I said, it's really an easy decision because ultimately the goal is to have kids graduate and, and, and have them prepared to take the path that they want to take, you know, and, to have a small part of that and, and get to do that and watching our kids leave Homer Center or any other school I've ever worked for and seeing that success and then you see them 10, 15, 20 years down the road and they come up to you and just how grateful they were for all the opportunities that they were able to receive or the help and the support they've received, not only while they were in school but beyond school. I think one of the things that makes Homer Center a little bit special you know, I, I don't mean this disparaging against anybody else. Our alumni at Homer Center, the people who graduated, not only from Homer Center, give my shout out to my to my peeps out there from Laurel Lamar. Okay, <laughs> they they love this school and they are passionate about this school. Okay, and they're passionate about helping the kids. We just had our awards night the other night where we give out our scholarships. You know, recipients. And just how many scholarships come from people that have graduated from this school or, or businesses out there to support this school. I mean, our, our kids are leaving here, like, you know, having two, that one that just recently finished school, myself, and one that's in the process. That financial assistance really matters. I mean, that, that makes the difference for a kid. And, you know, I'm so, I'm like, you know, I'm not a graduate of Homer Center, but I'm, I feel so blessed that I've been accepted from Homer Center community. And the other part of that is what, how passionate they are about this school and how prideful they are about this school. It's just incredible. It absolutely is. Well, would you said it so very, very well, we are out of time. Jody Rennie, high school principal of Homer Center. Thanks so much for the visit this morning. I appreciate it. Hey, Todd, two shout-outs. Our band and choral concert for the high school is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And also, a lot of people know we have an indoor percussion and an indoor guard group. The regional, uh, it's District 11, regional championships are this Saturday at the KCAC, and Homer Center will be part of that. So people looking for, like the arts, and want to go out and support some kids, uh, we'll see you tomorrow night at Homer Center, and hopefully see you Saturday night up at the KCAC. Beautiful. Thanks, Jody. All right. Have a great day, Todd. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. It's Indiana in the morning, and it's WCCS.